Okay. So those of you who have uh, low blood pressure might know why I'm sitting here. Um, but basically, um, yeah, I have low blood pressure, and sometimes I faint. And it is my biggest fear that I will faint in front of a crowd of people like yourselves. Um, so yeah, let's start with my um, project. First, what I want to talk about, though, is before I get into it, I just want to read off um, what the United Nations defines genocide as. Um, just so that you could get a understanding of why exactly I chose to pursue this issue uh, as a human rights issue. Um, so, in the present convention, genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethical, or ethnical, racial, or religious group, such as killing members of a group, causing serious bodily harm or mental harm, deliberately inflicting harm on the group in their conditions of life, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group, and forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. And I won't lie, when I first started this project, or when I first applied for this fellowship, I didn't really think that they would take my idea because um, I didn't think that it was something that was, um, that people actually like wanted to hear about. Um, so yeah, I guess I should start by saying that my name is Santana Cavanaugh. I major in critical race theory, human rights, and minority studies at Gallatin, and I'm also getting my master's degree in nonprofit management and public administration. Uh, I'm from Kentucky, and I'm an African American descendant of enslaved people, um, and I also am a victim of the war on drugs. Uh, many people in my family have been impacted by it, especially my grandmother, and I also carry the generational burden of poverty. And so that kind of has to do with why I chose to pick this issue because I personally saw the way that the war on drugs and mass incarceration was impacting my family and I wanted to look at it as a human rights standpoint. Okay, so this is the main statistic that really like drove me to like legitimize the idea. So although black Americans make up just 13% of the population, in terms of the current incarcerated population, uh, we make up 38% uh, of that population. So 38% is close to 40% and personally I round that to half. <laughs> um, and so when I saw the disparity, I recognized that it wasn't just me thinking that, oh, like I always see African Americans being put in jail, like that's not just like a norm. That was something that was structurally uh, created uh, and that was something that needed to be addressed in a way that it wasn't being addressed uh, or that, in a way that it still isn't uh, being addressed. So for my project, I chose to work with the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers uh, who has a mission to basically identify systemic racism within the criminal justice system. Uh, this is Monica Reed. She was my advisor uh, this summer and honestly, she's a bomb.com because uh, she helped me a lot this summer just with finding the information that I needed to create my report uh, and also um, keeping me in the network uh, with people who were interested in restorative justice, who were interested uh, in uh, African-American issues, um, and also so many other things. And I will say this, one thing that I really appreciate about the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers is they're a nonprofit organization and they have a lot of power in terms of uh, defense uh, law and the criminal defense system. Uh, and they choose actively to use racialized language actively to address uh, systemic and institutional racism that's put in the system. Uh, and as somebody who has worked in nonprofits uh, before, I know that language oftentimes is political. Um, and so I really appreciated that that's not what they did. Um, so what really started this project uh, was something that Basuki introduced us to was the 1951 We Charge Genocide uh, resolution, which was basically created by the Civil Rights Congress uh, in efforts to address the mass incarceration and police brutality that was going on uh, in 1951 against African Americans. Um, and this was sort of what guided me into the framework of my project, was looking at how exactly 70 years ago we had issues of mass incarceration and police brutality, and these issues were still present today. Um, and within my project, I focused a lot on what was the rationale of what was continuing uh, the genocide of African Americans. 
Um, the prolonged genocide, and those three things were criminalization, dehumanization, and demonization. Uh, through criminalization, we can think that, oh, African Americans are criminals, they are deserving of bad treatment. Through dehumanization, we can think, oh, they're not human, uh, so they are therefore not bound to the same rights that we are or that humans are. And then demonization, which, basic, which basically uh, ensures that um, we are thinking that it is right in what we do to African Americans. Um, and the biggest part of this project, uh, or the thing that I'm most proud of, is my simulation of a resolution for the United Nations to address uh, the oppression of African Americans uh, and to go about restorative justice and reparations. If you would like to hear more about this, I have a uh, document of it uh, that I can send over. And the five things that I focused on are restitution, compensation, rehabilitation, satisfaction, and guarantees of non-repetition. Uh, these are the guidelines that the United Nations uses. Um, and so these are the guidelines that I use uh, to go about trying to uh, implement ideas for restorative justice for the African American uh, community. Um, and also, not only was I able to focus on mass incarceration, specifically pertaining to African Americans, while working with NACDL, I was also able to work on a plethora of other projects, including writing a um, clemency or two clemency bills to the president for people who were being put in jail for cannabis usage, uh, and also some post-dobs training which worked on informing defense lawyers on how they could go about defending people who are being criminalized for abortions. So I'm very grateful for this experience, um, and I'm really glad to see uh, how it turned out. Um, and I just hope that as we move forward, we take the issue of mass incarceration and the oppression of African Americans more seriously. Uh, and we also legitimize the idea of reparations for African Americans. I know California is doing it and DC is doing it. Um, and so I just hope that one day we actually get to a point where we go about implementing it because at the end of the day, it's the bare minimum. Um, and that's about it, thank you.